In our next section, and this is going to be the last section of reactions in chapter 20. In our next section, we're going to be looking at nucleophilic addition reactions that use carbon nucleophiles. And there are three different carbon nucleophilic reactions that we're going to look at. The first one, number one, is one you've already learned, the Grignard reaction. And you have learned this two-step reaction. The Grignard reagent acts like an R minus. In this case, our R group is CH3. So this acts like a CH3 minus. And that R group attacks the carbonyl carbon and opens up the carbon oxygen double bond. And we get in the first step, we get negative charge on the oxygen because we've moved the electrons up onto the oxygen and we have formed a new bond with the alkyl group from the Grignard. And then our second step where we have uh, H3O plus in this particular example, all that we're doing here is protonating the O minus and this forms, as you know, this forms an alcohol. So you first learned about this reaction in 242 when you were learning about alcohols. And we also learned how to do Grignard retrosynthesis. So that would be where you were given a target alcohol and you were asked to show how that alcohol could be formed. And you learned in that uh, type of reaction that a lot of times you have a few options when you're trying to make an alcohol with a Grignard reaction, there's more than one different way to do it. Basically, when you're doing a Grignard reaction, you are putting onto the carbon that holds the OH group, the alcoholic carbon, you are putting an R group onto that carbon through the Grignard reaction. And you could choose, in this case we have three R groups, you could choose any one of those R groups to be the R group that gets added in the Grignard reaction. So let's say maybe we choose this R group to be added. Choose. As our Grignard. But again, there's no, there's no rule that says that that's the R group that I would have to choose for this reaction. We would choose the R group that made the most sense in terms of what kind of chemicals we had available to us in the lab uh, or what kind of um, chemicals were the easiest to work with. So we're gonna choose this ethyl to be our R group, which means that that's the Grignard that we're gonna be reacting with. And the rest of this molecule is going to be our carbonyl compound. So what we want to do is just kind of visualize this reaction happening in reverse. I'm going to draw, I'm going to draw the alcohol that we're forming here. In the last step of this, in the Grignard reaction, if we look up to the one above it, the last thing that's happening is protonation of the oxygen to make the alcohol. So let's just kind of write that out. Immediately before, before we form the alcohol, we have this guy right there, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and we're using H3O plus to protonate it. And so then let's think back even prior to that, um, before we form this O minus, this alkoxide, we had a carbon oxygen double bond and the carbon oxygen double bond was right here. So let's go ahead and start sketching that in. We had a carbon oxygen double bond and we decided that the ethyl group was, this was going to be our Grignard. So that means when we're drawing the ketone I'm going to draw it real ugly. This is what the ketone looks like that we reacted with. And our reactants here were this ethyl Grignard, MgBr, which is followed by, oh, we already got the H0 plus on there. And that's it.